Before Marilyn Monroe, there was Jean Harlow, who many in Hollywood have dubbed the original blonde bombshell. Harlow married MGM studio executive Paul Byrne, but it was a tumultuous wedding though, as Byrne was rumored to have been physically abusive towards her. While Byrne may have been intellectually superior to Harlow, he wasn't much to look at in the looks department. Regardless, he gained a reputation in Hollywood as a sensitive and compassionate man, which was a rare thing, and he began to be called Hollywood's father confessor. Byrne was also never much for the public life. He was something of a mystery man, especially to those who craved a spotlight and the lure of Hollywood's nightlife. So when he began appearing in local night spots with Gene Harlow, no one thought much of it. They assumed that it could never last, and soon, things began to change. As the weeks passed, Byrne looked less and less happy, becoming pale, distraught, and almost haggard. He didn't tell anyone what was bothering him, but that didn't stop the rumors from spreading. One of the rumors stated that they were having money problems, and Gene didn't like the house they were living in, and wanted to sell it. Byrne refused and argued with Gene. The house was located in the midst of five acres of ground in Beverly Hills' Benedict Canyon. On September 5, 1932, just four months after his marriage to Gene Harlow, <laughs> Paul Byrne was found shot to death in the house. He had been shot in the head with a .38 caliber revolver, which was laying by his side. It was said that Jean Harlow loved Byrne so much that when his body was discovered, she too attempted suicide. Even though her attempt was not successful, Harlow's days were numbered. She died five years later at the age of 26. Many questions remain unanswered regarding the death of Paul Byrne. Could this be why his ghost is still haunting the Harlow house? Perhaps but many believe that Byrne's first outwardly appearance in the house was actually meant as a warning. It was an advanced premonition for another beautiful blonde actress that if she had heeded it, might have saved her life. That woman's name was Sharon Tate. In 1969, Sharon would fall victim to one of the most savage slayings in Hollywood history. But three years before she was brutally murdered at the hands of the Charles Manson family, she glimpsed the ghostly image of the horrific fate that awaited her. Sharon was a struggling actress, hoping to make a name for herself when she met Jay Sebring, who would soon become known as the premier men's hairstylist in Hollywood. The two dated for three years and even announced their engagement at one point, but Sharon broke it off with them in 1966 when she met her future husband, Roman Polanski. The breakup was not bitter and the two of them stayed very close friends. In fact, it was Jay who was keeping Sharon company at the Cielo Drive house while Roman was away filming. And it was Jay who died trying to protect her from the Manson clan. Jay lived in Benedict Canyon, in the former home of Gene Harlow. He loved the house but was always concerned about its past. He knew the stories about Paul Byrne's death. But he also learned that two people had drowned in the swimming pool as well. He shrugged off the idea that the house was cursed, but perhaps he shouldn't have. One night in 1966, Sharon stayed alone at Jay's house. Unable to sleep, so she stayed awake in James' room with all the lights on. She was very uncomfortable. Although she couldn't explain why, she felt funny and was frightened by every little sound she heard. Suddenly, a person that she described as a creepy little man came into the bedroom. What happened next would be especially chilling in light of events to come. Sharon started down the stairs, but halfway down she froze in shock. There was a figure tied to the staircase post at the bottom of the steps. She couldn't tell if this was a man or a woman. However, she could clearly see that the figure's throat had been cut. Then the apparition vanished. Shaken, Sharon went into the living room to get herself a drink, but couldn't find where Jay kept alcohol. She felt an inexplicable urge to press on a section of the bookcase, and it opened to reveal a hidden bar. Not thinking, she tore away a piece of wallpaper at the base of the bar as she nervously poured herself a drink. In the morning, Sharon was convinced that the whole episode had been a terrible nightmare, until she saw the wallpaper that had been torn away from the bar. She had indeed seen the ghost of Paul Byrne, and at that time, had annoyingly seen a vision of her fate. 